I can't wait to get this thing mounted up on the V8 personal watercraft. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we can't just use magic to install the turbo, so we got a bit of work ahead of us. Do I need to do that? These are the old exhaust manifolds and they're not gonna work with the turbo. So you guys have seen me preparing the new exhaust manifolds already and they're looking pretty good, but they're not finished yet. We gotta finish them up. Okay, Mia, here's the deal. We have got the exhaust manifolds and we need to continue working on them, right? To make sure that they're watertight before we go any farther. We need to drill the hole, get some sort of connector on there, and make sure it's watertight. One small pinhole right there. Got it marked out. Gonna we'll re-weld that. I'm gonna hit it with the torch to get the moisture off. Weld, test, go weld some more, test some more. Any amount of wetness is just unacceptable. Everything's still nice and dry, so we are good to go to the next step on this manifold. <laughs>
I have the one side done on the exhaust manifold. Still have to build out the exhaust to the T4 flange. This guy right here. This will go here and the turbo sits on top of this. Now there's an airplane flying over, which is awesome. Just love it. Now I do need to finish the manifold section on this side. So on the last one of these, to pressure test it, I cut a hole, put some weld, tapped it, and it was such a huge pain in the butt that I bought a whole bunch of these. So I'll just cut a hole, weld the bung on there, and they'll be ready to pressure test. It's a multi-step process to get that turbo mounted up and I gotta do all of the steps in the correct order. Now I have the exhaust manifolds done and mounted up. Right? Yeah, no, I do. Next thing I need to do is the rear engine mount and that is because we removed all of that when we took out the old gearbox. The old gearbox and the engine mounts here and here were built into the entire gearbox itself. My mind just went blank. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm just gonna give you guys the next steps. No explanations why. Just, there is a reason for me doing it this way. Building the rear engine mounts, getting the top deck fitted because we know it's gonna have to be modified to fit around the exhaust. No, nope, no explanations. Then getting the turbo and figuring out where it's gonna fit underneath the top deck. Well, I've been working through some cardboard aided design for the engine mounts. Now it's pretty simple. I gotta transfer this design onto a piece of steel, cut it out, and weld it up. My very first cardboard cutout, the next one after that, and now the steel version, stainless steel version, which goes on here. Can you say hi? <laughs> All right, we're off. We need the ability to be able to shim the engine down. Obviously shimming it up is easy. We can just stick more shims in. We want our zero point to have shims in there so we'll have adjustability down in the future if that's necessary. One millimeter spacers. Now before anything gets welded, the pump has to go in the ski 
we got to get an alignment. Once we get the alignment perfect, then some welding can happen. I need one of these. I was going to finish the mounts in the rear, and that's when I realized that there was a problem. Well, it totally sucks, and it is pretty much all my fault, but I have to cut the gearbox away from the bell housing and redo the entire welding part of the gearbox. Basically, what it comes down to is the gearbox needs to be mounted five millimeters farther forward in the bell housing. So this causes a few problems the way it is right now. Number one being that the coupler alignment is too close together. There's a small gap that needs to be right there, which we had none. The alignment problem we can work around. Oh. But the big problem that we can't work around is what happens inside the gearbox because of what's going on. Oh, hello. Oh, broke it. I'm not gonna go into technical detail about it, but needless to say, it's not great. No. No. Yeah, but it's okay because we can fix it, right? Yes. Has it works. problem area, this needs to be cut back five millimeters. I've got five millimeters cut off this section. Now I'm going to double, triple check this. <laughs> I wish I would have done it right the first time, but oh man. It's like if something goes too easy, then you need to stop, figure out what you forgot to do or what you did wrong because if it's going together easy, that means there's something definitely wrong. Well, I have finally figured out where it all went wrong. So the big gear goes on here. And it rests on the shoulder of that shaft. That way it doesn't press up against the inner gearbox casing and grind it all down. The shoulder of this bearing is supposed to rest on the shoulder of the gear. You won't be able to see this, but I can pull, grab the gear, slide it back and forth. That's not what we want. This isn't pressed in as far as we want. It has that extra three to five millimeter gap. This is the old faceplate from the old gearbox. And we were using a different bearing for this spot. So the old bearing has a depth of 17 millimeters. The new bearing is 15 millimeters. And furthermore, backing plate is machined a little bit so the shaft from there can fit in a little bit farther. So here's the bearing that we use. Really, that's only two and a half millimeters.
I've been welding little spot welds and then measuring everything. Spot welds then measuring because, you know, I don't want to redo it. I've already redone it. This is the second time redoing it, I guess, or doing it. Yeah. But I got pretty far into welding it permanent. And I thought to myself, I better put it on the engine and check and make sure it fits. Fitment is really good. Happy, happy so far. Not happy that I had to redo it, but take everything how it is and just deal with it. Now let's get the engine, bolt it back in, reinstalled, and weld up the mounts for this thing. Everything's a lot more happy now that the belt housing and gearbox is more correct. Using the old school chain so I can do a very fine adjustment. Sometimes you gotta take it old school. Here's what we got so far. This is done. I've now accomplished something. Can I have a speaking part in this video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I set off at the beginning of this video to get the turbo mounted up and yeah, I made some okay progress on the manifolds, but it definitely took a weird turn after I decided to do the rear engine mount. Oh yeah? Yeah, well that's why it took so long, guys. He ruined it. I hope you liked the video. You know what? Thank you to the guys who just started watching. Maybe you guys all have been for subscribed for years and never watched a single Jet Ski Brothers video. You finally decided to watch a Jet Ski Brothers because you subscribed five years ago. I hope you loved it. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see the previous video on this thing, it'll be linked at the top, and I will have the next video linked underneath when it's available. Molly, you got a bit of a mustache and beard going on. What's that? Were you out playing in the dirt? What's that? We hear the lawnmower? Wow. Oh. Lawnmower, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just for visualization. Oh.